ways to connect with our community. We are going to record these. They will be found on the Plant Sedona website as soon as we possibly can. But tonight we're here to talk about circulation. We have several good speakers that have offered to help. Thank you so much. So we are facilitators and we live in Flagstaff. We also have offices in Tucson and in Phoenix. And the purpose of us being here is to ensure broad community support as it relates to the update of the community plan. And Cynthia is gonna talk, Cynthia Lovely is gonna talk more about the community plan, what it is, um, how often, why it's important, how often it gets a revisit. Uh, we uh, started with a community forum in September of 2020. We hope that many of you were there. Um, we also are have the, the privilege of facilitating a citizen work group of which many have joined this evening. And I'd like to recognize those folks that are, that are on the screen. Just give us a little wave. Rick Henderson. Ernie yep. Stroud. Uh, Mary Garland. Monica Garland. John Sather. Ann Kelly. Hello. And a work group member turned city council, Brian Fultz. Did Mike join yet? He registered. Mike Taylor, are you here yet? And and if we could ask you all, we'll ask you again, but please put your microphones on mute this evening. Obviously we'll be discussing later and we'll ask you to take it off of mute, but for now, so we can all hear, if you could turn your microphones on mute, that would be great. We have this listening and learning session. We've got another one coming up next week surrounding economic vitality. And then we're looking forward in February and March, at least to doing some in-person and topical workshops surrounding tourism, balancing the environment and all the elements that live within the community plan. Again, I'm here with Carrie and Jessica with Southwest Decision Resources. Thank you for joining us. We are helping you all update your community plan. We wanna share with you what the plan is, what the city has been working on, and we really wanna hear from you regarding your questions and your comments. This is intended to be listening and learning. So we're gonna propose some learning from the city, city staff members you're going to learn, we're going to learn from you, and uh, we hope to continue this conversation into the future. First, Cynthia is going to do Community Plan 101. She's going to talk about the goals for the circulation chapter at that time, 10 years ago. It's been 10 years since this plan has been updated. And then Andy Dickey, Sandy Phillips, Robert Weber, and Kurt Harris, actually Robert may be joining us late, will be talking about Sedona in motion and all the things that are happening with surrounding circulation in Sedona. And then we'll have the opportunity to break into three groups to have small group conversations uh, where you get to decide what you wanna talk about. Are we doing that now? Yep. Okay, so Carrie's gonna launch a quick poll and there's gonna be three opportunities tonight. You can join streets, transit, or a bike and pedestrian. If you're interested in transit, you won't see your option here in a minute. And that's okay because you're gonna stay in this room. So if you wanna do transit, don't do anything, just hang with us. But if you wanna join bike or if you wanna join uh, streets, you'll have an opportunity to do that. Is it launching? Okay, we're gonna so do a quick I see, poll. I see people going to like what they would like to talk about. That's fantastic. I wanna make sure that people have enough time to do that. The great thing about the poll is that it tells me how many people have indicated. And this is just to give us an idea of about how many people are gonna be in a, each breakout room. If it's split a third, a third, and a third, or if there's more in one. So I'm gonna let you guys have 10 more seconds to go ahead and let us know which breakout room you would like to join later after the presentation. We're gonna have to do math for transit. <laughs> do I stop share? No, it's on here. But it's I, on here. do I stop sharing so you can share nope. the results? Okay. I think I should be able to share it. Okay. Right. Survey says, just one second. I see people still, still choosing, still choosing. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Okay. Here is what. No. Can anybody see it? Yeah. No, I can't. You post in a minute. Okay. So. 12 people want to go to streets, eight people want to go to bike and pedestrian, and 12 people want to go to transit. We recognize there's more than those 32 people here tonight, but this gives us a good idea. It's pretty balanced. To split up the group. 
Great. So thank you so much for taking that quick poll. Again, that'll be after the presentation this evening when you'll get to join those breakout rooms. <laughs> Tonight, we really wanna work under some working agreements. It turns out circulation and traffic is complex in Sedona. I visit there, I understand, and I don't live there. So we'd ask tonight that you really listen for understanding. These are complicated processes. We know there's been some frustration. Um, we really wanna make sure we're listening to one another. We wanna ask thoughtful questions regarding the content of what's presented tonight and respect everyone that's in attendance. We just don't tolerate any personal attacks on each other or the facilitators or the speakers this evening. And also really provide the space and time for clarifications of questions. Any and all questions that do not get answered tonight will be recorded in the chat box and we will get you answers to those questions um, over time, promises there. All right, some quick Zoom tips if you've never used Zoom. Gosh, we're three and a half years into the pandemic, but I hope you've never used Zoom. If you care to rename yourself to tell us a little more about yourself, please do so. There's some three dots on your picture. You can figure that out. Uh, please mute while we're in the meeting and minimize background noise when you are speaking. Please turn your video on if you can. We really would love to see your faces. Uh, this isn't as good as getting together, but we wanna make sure that we have a, a variety of ways in which people can engage. There's a view of the, a list of participants. If you'd like to see who's joined us there this evening, we're up to 46 people now. You can chat. In this case, you can only chat the, co the host and the co-host. Um, you can't chat everyone in the, build in the building, in the room. We wanted to minimize clutter and make sure that people can have the opportunity to really pay attention. But if you, as we move through it forward and you have questions, please do use the chat box. The chat box is that little uh, call out there. Um, you can choose to view this in grid form where you can see everyone, or you can choose a variety of different views. Obviously, that's complicated when we're sharing screen, because now you can just see my big screen. And just like with other in-meeting etiquette, etiquette, please use respectful en engagement in this virtual world. Try not to be, be doing too much multitasking. And again, do put those questions in the chat box at any time, and one of us will get back to you. I'm going to move your lovely faces around again so I can advance the slide. <sighs> Please move. Here we go. I think I'm, that's my last, yeah, it's my last slide. Cynthia. Right on time, Cynthia, just so you know. You're muted, Cynthia. I know, I just realized that. Okay, so I'm Cynthia Lovely and I am principal planner for the city of Sedona in our community development department. So I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the Sedona Community Plan. I will try to keep it brief because this topic alone could be a two hour session. <laughs> so there is more information about the community plan on our website, which is plansedona.com. Um, you can also, as she said, um, type in your questions in the chat box. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Okay. All right. So the Sedona Community Plan is a document that is actually required by the state of Arizona. Uh, the state calls it a general plan. So some communities, you might see the term general plan. Uh, some of them call it a comprehensive plan. We call ours the community plan. And the state also requires that it is updated every 10 years or renewed. Um, so the city, as hopefully most of you know, the city didn't incorporate until 1988. And so the first plan for the city was in 1991. Um, and then there's been several more plans. Um, right now we're working on our, we're working with our 2013 plan, meaning that that 2013 plan um, is still active, still valid until we do this update. And I always, always want to remind people that this is a 10-year a plan. And so when we talk about future of Sedona, we, we are trying to look out 10 years. Um, so basically until 2033. Um, and that's sometimes hard to keep in mind. Um, so the photo that you see is an old historic, um, it's actually a postcard. Um, and I I'm showing you a couple of these historic photos just to kind of make the point that um, Sedona was never planned. There was not a plan for development. 
Um, it just grew over time. And so we are in a way kind of stuck with what we got from the county. So um, yeah, I think the best example of that, especially related to circulation is that when before incorporation, we were under the county, um, they might approve subdivisions. And on the south side of West Sedona, there are a whole bunch of subdivisions that connect to the highway, but not to each other. That's an example of growing over time. And next slide. Maybe. I'm trying, Cynthia. Okay. Here we go. Got it. Okay. So as I mentioned, <laughs> streets connecting to 89. This is West Sedona um, back in the day. I don't know the exact date of this photo. Um, but this is an example of how we were under county jurisdiction. Um, they didn't have, you know, community plans back then. Uh, they weren't really too concerned about connecting streets. And so we're we're kind of stuck with, with what we've got. And so we've been trying to retrofit as much as possible, but as you can tell, everything's been built out. Uh, the city itself is about 80% built out. 50% um, of it is national forest. So we don't have much room left to grow. Um, and that's where this community plan will be very important as to what do we do with the remaining property that has yet to be developed. So the community plan uh, covers the topics on the screen there. Um, we are going to talk about circulation today. Um, land use and housing is kind of the primary purpose of a community plan or general plan. Um, and environment, sustainability, community, and economy are some of the other chapters that the plan covers. Next. Okay. So again, I won't go into a whole bunch of detail, but 10 years ago, actually more than 10 years ago, we were doing a community planning process very similar to this, um, where we took public input and the number one message that we heard from the public was fixed traffic. So traffic was just the number one topic um, that we heard from the public, much as it is today. Um, and actually, if you go back in time, we have old newspaper clippings. Traffic has been an issue of concern for many, many years. Um, so basically the way we structure our community plan is we listen to the public input, and then that feeds into the plan's vision themes. And a the vision is what you want the community to look like in the future. And then we have goals as to how we might get there. And then there's policies and then there's action items. And so the plan itself is used in multiple ways. It could be used when uh, we are reviewing a development proposal, for example, a subdivision or it can guide capital improvement projects that the city is building. And the best example of that you will hear about tonight um, from our public works department. And so let's see, what's the next slide? Sorry. Okay, one more, one more slide for me. <laughs> okay. So going back to the process, we, we hear the public feedback and then we develop a plan with goals and action items. So these are the ones that are specific to the circulation chapter of the plan. Um, and these are just three out of, I think, six goals. Um, and then the action items that are listed in the plan. There's certainly more that are listed, but these are probably the three most relevant, most important to what you will be hearing about this evening. Um, and so from that, I didn't do a chart, but you can kind of imagine that everything kind of filters down to the action items. In these examples, they are plans or studies um, that look into things in more detail. Um, and that's where 
you get your capital improvement projects, for example, the transportation plan um, recommends specific projects. And so from there, I think I turn it over to public works. So that's right. the planning side. And then we'll go to public works to hear about implementing the plan. Not before we take another very, we want to look, take a look at these goals. So Carrie is going to launch another quick poll and we want you to look at these goals. These are the goals that were part of the last plans discussion on circulation. And so you know, if if there's some of these just don't make sense to you anymore, or you would have major modifications, um, hit no. This is a simple yes, no question. Um, you know, maybe write them down as they come across your screen, but we want to make sure that these goals are still relevant. Doesn't mean that they're going to stay absolutely, but are they still tracking over time? So we launch it. Okay, yeah. go ahead and do that real quick. We'll give that just a minute. And then this is the queue once we get those results for the public works folks to start talking. So are we there yet, Carrie? Yeah, just one second. I got 10 seconds left. <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to indicate whether they think these goals are still relevant. I hope it's not a bunch of no's. You got work to do if it's a whole bunch of no's, right. Cynthia. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead. 39 people indicated that 87 of you, 87% of you, feel like these goals are still relevant. So I would say that's a pretty large majority. So thank you again for taking um, that poll. We really appreciate it. And let's uh, queue up Andy. And we encourage the 13% to tell us why when we get together. Right. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Andy. Good evening, everybody. I'm Andy Dickey. I'm the Assistant City Manager and Director of Public Works. With me, I've got a few other team members. Sandy Phillips is with us. She's the Assistant Director of Public Works and Assistant City Engineer. Robert Weber may be joining us later. Um, if not, Kurt Harris will step in for him. Robert is our Transit Administrator and Kurt is our Engineering Supervisor. I'll give a brief overview of what our programs include in relation to circulation and later we'll break out into individual topics. Thank you. To address circulation challenges, we start with planning. We've developed roadmaps that help us get where we need to go with respect to circulation improvement, which you see here. Next slide. Oh, there we go. These roadmaps come from plans we've completed since the, the last community plan. These include the transportation master plan, which includes our Sedona in motion projects. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. We also have the get outside or go Sedona pathways plan and the transit in, uh, implementation plan. Next slide, please. There's a little in delay fact, between Flagstaff and Sedona. <laughs> in fact, we have uh, 24 plans completed since 1991. And all those plans show us that, yes, traffic is important. And some of the issues related to traffic we need to solve. Next slide, please. From this planning, these uh, the strategies outlined in the transportation master plan and shown here are what's recommended and what we call Sedona in motion. The main focus of these strategies relate to street improvements like reducing bottlenecks and increasing capacity, bike and ped and transit projects that manage traffic by reducing trips from congested areas by giving multimodal options for travel. And then traveler information, which incorporates intelligent uh, transportation systems like travel time data and route options based on congestion and parking information to improve uh, in efficient travel. We'll get more into the details on these later on. Next slide, please. 
Another important factor to keep in mind with the Sedona in Motion program is it's not just incorporating one concept. There are many. As you can see, there are many also within each improvement area. Streets, for instance, we look at intersection improvements, reducing bottlenecks, things like that. Walking and biking, we're looking at creating shared use paths and other connections that give us multimodal opportunities for travel. Then transit in that area, we're looking at the service itself, including the buses, the, the administration of the system and things like that, as well as our park and ride um, lots. Those are improvements that we have to make in that area, as well as multimodal set centers like the ride exchange, which later on you can hear more about if you wanna break out into that transit group. And then parking and um, other areas of the transportation master plan look to reduce uh, trips through um, um, making parking uh, efficient, implementing travel information systems, as well as uh, signal management, making that efficient as well. Next slide, please. As we've prepared for tonight, we have heard many things, and we'll just go through a few of these real quickly. We, we hear often that we need to um, build an overpass at Tulakipaki. We have actually designed an un underpass that will cross 179 by the existing Oak Creek Bridge. The design is complete, as I said, and we're out for um, bid for construction on that project currently. We also hear that we need to pave Schnebly Hill Road. This is something that we actually looked at in the transportation master plan effort. We found that the, the road being on for service property, you know, requires a lot of extra challenges, you know, environmental studies and it, it would be a very costly effort. It's something that could be pursued in the future, but definitely would need to overcome those environmental challenges that take years sometimes to go through, as well as uh, the cost that would be required. And in 2018, we projected that the cost of that effort would be around $34 million. And um, in today's dollars, that would be more, as you know, and then uh, the, one of the final issues that we had with that is that it would actually introduce additional traffic onto State Route 179, which it would not be a good thing where, where we have a lot of congestion uh, currently. Then another thing that we hear is that we need a bypass of Uptown with a bridge over Oak Creek connecting to Chenebly Hill Road. That, that includes a lot of the same challenges that I just talked about. And some of the environmental impacts would be much more significant considering that you would have to cross an impaired waterway, which is Oak Creek. Another thing that we hear quite often is why does it take so long to do the projects that we do? And uh, we actually have a slide coming up where we go into a little more detail about just what's involved in taking a project from start to finish. And then finally, one of the the things that we wanted to point out that we hear a lot is why don't we just build a gate at each entrance to the city and uh, you know whoever came in last let's not let anybody else in and um, you know it's just not as easy as that those are state routes they have to be open to the public and we can't just shut them off like that so anyway those are some of the things that we hear a lot and um, I'm guessing you've heard those things as well. Now, what, what does it take to go from start to finish on a project? There are lots of potentials for delays and speed bumps along the way. When we go from pre-design, you know, we, we got to conceive a project, budget for it. And each of these steps along the way, you, you'll see some common things that have to happen, like council approval and public outreach. Going into design, you've got addition, lots of studies that we have to complete. And a lot of times those studies are needing to be coordinated with permitting agencies. 
which have uh, lots of requirements that can take quite a bit of time. And then uh, going through procure procurement, that's that's a big challenge that we're dealing with today with uh, inflation and contractors that are overloaded with work and don't really need to be competitive with their bidding. And, uh, you know, it can really slow a project down when we have to bid it out multiple times. And, you know, it, it, a lot of times when we're doing that, we're reaching out to multiple contractors, trying to get them engaged in the bidding process, finding out if there were issues with anything that we did. And uh, sometimes going back to the drawing board, which, you know, along with public outreach, those those things can sometimes result in uh, going back, redoing design and and extending how long it takes to get through a project. And then finally, just to construct a project, you know, there can be many issues that we encounter uh, once we start that process. So from start to finish, it's pretty involved what we have to go through. So next slide, please. Why the why? This is something that we look at and something we can talk in more detail about if you want to go into the uh, the streets breakout se session later on. There's a lot of com uh, complexi uh, complexity, excuse me, with that with that corridor. You've got essentially what we say is all read all roads lead to the why. So you've got congestion on multiple corridors that are all converging at one point. Um, when you solve one congestion issue, sometimes you can actually create another. And uh, you have to really look at all segments of the highways that pass through the Y area. And, and that's something that we've done. And I can talk in more detail. We've, uh, we've created models that do incorporate you know, that full region, all three corridors into one traffic model so that we can see when we we kind of relate it to turning levers and, and knobs on a water system. Sometimes when you open one up, it shoots out water somewhere else where you weren't expecting it. A great example very quickly would be when we solved uh, traffic issues for southbound 89A with our first uh, SIM project, which was the uh, Uptown Roadway Improvements, we saw other areas where we had made traffic efficient. It impacted other areas and uh, made those other areas less efficient. So the modeling that we do <laughs> has to incorporate the full uh, region and um, look at every aspect of, of the, the, the transportation system in that area. Now, what are we doing about it? Uh, we've got a few major areas that we're working on that will help traffic in that region. One is the major road connections. Um, these, these are in the, the Brewer area where we're able to take trips off of 179 and distribute those out to, uh, to get them out of the congested area. Sometimes those are a small, small number of trips, but uh, just a, a, a few trips on a congested area can sometimes relate into a, a big amount of delay. Another thing that we're working on is the Forest Road uh, connection. This will provide an additional um, access to the uptown area from West Sedona, and it'll take trips off of the Y. So that's going to have a big impact on this area. And uh, one other project that we want to point out is is the underpass at Oak Creek on 179. Um, we are looking at ways of making uh, traffic more efficient. While our studies and modeling have found that that crossing is, in fact, not the biggest contributor to congestion, it is a contributor and something that we're looking at how we can make it more, uh, more efficient. Okay, we're going on. I get the cue. So if you look at projects that we've, we're in process on or completing in this area, um, this gives a list here. You can see the street projects in the brown. Uh, I just men mentioned the Forest Road extension. 
as well as uh, some of the Brewer Road uh, area projects down there. Uh, you can see as and then uh, on the right side of this area, you're seeing some of the uptown projects, public parking improvements, um, and then uh, parking lot improvements and, and things like that are all incorporated into those parking area um, program uh, areas within the Sedona in motion. And Specifically, street projects in Uptown, the southbound improvements phase one we've already completed. Northbound, we're in design on that right now, looking at ways that we can make uh, improvements between the Y in Uptown and make that traffic more efficient. And then um, I mentioned the pedestrian crossing is listed there as well. Next slide, please. All right, so we saw the roadmap earlier. Are we there yet? No, we still have quite a bit of work to do, and um, we can talk about that further in the breakout sessions if you'd like. That's another shot of projects that we've completed and I'm working on. This, this version here also includes transit projects. I mentioned uh, some of these earlier with uh, park and ride type improvements that are already complete as well as some of the um, some of the let's see uh, bike and pet improvements you see here as well and i won't go through those in detail we can talk about those uh in specifically in the breakout sessions again we're going to have um bike and pet transit and streets and i'll turn Great. it back to andy thank you andy from Andy to Andy. <laughs> um, we're gonna take just a five minute break. We did have a handful of questions that came in. It's not too late to get your questions in, general questions for Andy, general questions for Cynthia about the community planning process moving forward. Really any question, uh, we will address those um, in a group, a plenary style Q&A when we come back for just a few minutes and then we'll, we'll launch into breakout rooms. For those of you just joining, um, we're going to take a five minute break. So if, if you didn't just join, please turn your cameras off, your mute on. We'll see you in five minutes. That's at 610. And for those of you, those of you that did just join, this presentation will be made available on the website. And in a minute after Q&A, you're going to be asked to join a breakout room. Your options for the breakout room will be transit, streets, or bike and pedestrian. Those will be your three options. And we'll give more uh, information in a minute. So we'll see you in five. Yep. Oh, good job, Jessica. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> um, I just wanted to, I think that this is a great overview question regarding Sedona in motion and the projects. And the question is, is there any data to support whether Sedona in motion projects that have been completed are having desired results? So I feel like that's probably an, an Mr. Dickey question. I want to make <laughs> sure he has time to answer that. You bet. Yeah, so one thing that we started actually in 2017 was collecting travel time data. And we collect this data between points along the routes. So for instance, on 89A northbound, we track from airport road to the Y. We do track uh, also southbound from um, the trout farm to the Y. And then from northbound 179, uh, 179, we track from Bell Rock Boulevard to the Y. And we do track some other congestion points as well, but those are kind of the three main areas that we look at. In, in collecting this data, one thing that we were able to find was that it, prior to completing the improvements in Uptown, we had a certain number of congestion events, and I don't have that in front of me now, but um, it, it was, uh, you know, severe congestion. We were looking at taking that trip from the trout farm to the Y being over 30 minutes when a free flow trip was only seven minutes. We were, we were able to reduce that from before the trip, uh, before the project, I should say, to um, a point after after the project was complete significantly. Um, I believe it was something like 30 um, congested trips, that's trips over 30 minutes again, prior to the project, and it was down to about eight 
after the project was complete. Um, and what we did find as well is some of those eight trips were related not really to just traffic congestion, but more like accidents and construction ADOT was doing in uh, Oak Creek Canyon and stuff like that. So yes, we, we do collect data so that we're able to look at it later after a project's complete and be able to show that, um, that we met our goal of reducing uh, congestion in that specific uh, corridor. Great, thank you, Andy. And again, we can don't just keep letting the the questions flow too as well. We'll we'll get to them if we can, and if not, we can get to them after the after the session. Uh, Jessica, are you up next? Yeah. So the next question is asking about the Tlaquipaque underpass. Is that a finalized plan? Can you speak a little bit more about that? We have been working on that plan for quite some time. Um, like I said before, we have put that out to bid for construction. So, um, you know, like I also mentioned before, every time we go out to the public, sometimes we go back to the drawing board. But um, one thing to keep in mind with that is, is we've really jumped through a lot of hoops, um, making stakeholders, um, I would I would I would say uh, not necessarily happy, but getting them on board with the direction that we were taking the project. And um, some of those stakeholders are ADOT. We had to get a, a permit and um, had to satisfy all of their concerns and then uh, had to work with the adjacent property owners and satisfy their concerns and um, so where we ended up with the project is is in a place where we could satisfy a lot of different um, concerns and requirements, and um, like I said, permitting and you know there's a lot that went into that. So while it could change, um, it would certainly delay the project by quite a bit. But um, preferably, we would take the project where it's at. Now it would be complete with design and we would move into construction. So, so one just came in that's a, a secondary question to the Talakapaki one. Um, actually, two people have the same question. Does the finalized plan for Talakapaki include closure of the crosswalk? And if not, what will the value be? Sounds like there's concern about the two questions about the pedestrian crossing. Will that be closed? So initially with the project, the idea is that it not be closed um, initially when the project is complete. There is a stipulation with the ADOT permit that says once the crossing, undercrossing that is, is complete, that we would be able to close the at-grade crossing at the highway and be able to test, um, you know, travel times, tra traffic data, ped, ped traffic, you know, all of those kind of things and show whether or not the crossing in fact needs to be fully closed. And um, so that's something that we would look at. I would also quickly say that I mentioned earlier that the crossing is not in fact the, the, main, the biggest contributor to congestion on 179. And I can talk about that more in our breakout if, if needed, but um, it is certainly a contributing factor. Most people believe it is uh, the single contributor to congestion while it's not. Um, but uh, that's something that we're looking at is how to make it most uh, efficient, you know, within that corridor. And so there is a possibility that we <clears throat> not fully close the agri crossing, but we implement things like a signal in place to help make that traffic flow most efficient. Great. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Carrie, let's go to the other one we have about um, engagement process. And I'm gonna move to that slide to help with that. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, the, um, the question was, why doesn't public outreach occur prior to council approval? Um, it says that it shows outreach happening after council approval. This seems to be inefficient and um, doesn't allow for a council to receive resident input. And I just wanted to clarify, allow you to clarify that, Andy, if that is the, the key points within each box here, mm -hmm. if those are kind of sequential order or those are all the things that happen in pre-design planning, in design, et cetera. 
No, they're they're not in um, actually in order uh, as far as how they actually occur. Usually, what happens is the very first thing you know going into pre-design there is that a concept is developed and it's budgeted, and then as we move into design, we include uh, public outreach, and that does in fact occur uh, prior to council approval of of the actual design. Now, let me clarify that. What does happen before public outreach, though, would be approval of a design contract, which essentially allows us to be, begin the design process and develop the documents that we would need in order to conduct a public outreach effort. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll go back to that pretty map. What's next? We have uh, three more minutes for questions. So that's a couple of, couple of questions. So quick question, and this one is kind of a, a dual kind of topic related. Um, we recognize that Sedona has a really immense amount of visitors and this, this contributes a lot to um, to dealing with managing traffic. So the bulk of this question is, um, is there a way to better manage visitation to reduce traffic during peak periods? And if there is a way, how can that be done? That's a good question. And um, as I understand it, that's something that council is gonna be working with, um, with the chamber on coming up uh, during the council retreat, which is uh, just uh, a month or so away. And um, so, that, you know, that's something that we're always looking at is how to best manage that um, visitation because that is in fact, the large, largest contribution to our congestion is, uh, is not really our resident traffic, but our, our visitor traffic, so. And uh, Cynthia, Cynthia, this is when I'm gonna cue you up to pitch um, the, the future conversations surrounding visitation and tourism. Do you wanna please briefly mention that? This can be your sales pitch for everybody to come. Yeah. Cynthia. <laughs> I did it again. Okay. So <laughs> we're gonna be holding an in-person workshop. Um, it looks like we may not be ready to do that until February, um, but we are going to focus on tourism and how it impacts or interconnects with all of these other issues from traffic, um, the economy, the environment. Um, so that is going to be a very in-depth uh, discussion and you might want to look for that. We will email out the information once we have it available. So, but it it will kind of talk about all the puzzle pieces. So, from transit to um, yeah, how it impacts neighborhoods, all of that good stuff. So, great. Let's do let's do one to two more questions, quick ones. Sure, I have a quick one. This is a two part, it gets two questions. Um, <laughs> number one, what is the biggest contributor to congestion on 179 from your perspective? And then second, is there a possibility to connect West Sedona to 179? Yeah, so... we, got your, we got your question, Joe. <laughs> so the biggest contributor based on um, our um, studies and um, analysis of the traffic in that corridor is actually a uh, Schnebly Hill roundabout. So when there are left turns and U-turn movements in the Schnebly Hill roundabout, each one of those interrupts northbound 179 traffic. And um, that's actually the biggest contributor to congestion in 179. So what was the second part again? I'm sorry. Oh, connecting to 179 from West Sedona. <clears throat> um, you know, there. I don't know if everyone's aware, but there is a development that has looked at trying to make a connection. Um, and one of the options was across Oak Creek to 179. That was the 
Tobias Flynn is uh, the owner of that property. They've been trying to make that connection for years. And uh, I think that gives a, a good example of what it would take if you wanted to make a connection from West Sedona um, within city limits to 179. Of course, one of the things that's been lo looked at is uh, rebuilding Red Rock Crossing. Um, and, and I can talk to that separately. But again, uh, if you wanted to do it within city limits, uh, you know, you've got significant environmental impacts that you would have to mitigate and uh, go through the years of process that that would take. You would have, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars uh, for a, a bridge structure, land acquisition, um, consulting and, and um, studies and things like that. And, um, you know, uh, it, it comes down to also how feasible is it that someone would use that, um, that connection. It depends on where you bring it into 179. If you bring it in where it's uh, within the middle of congestion, then it doesn't really make sense. A bypass typically goes around the congestion areas. So hopefully that helps. We invite you to continue that discussion in streets um, with Andy. So I'm going to turn it over to Carrie here. If, you, if some of you just joined, we're now heading into uh, breakout rooms. Your options are going to be streets, walking and biking, and transit. Again, a reminder, if you want to talk about transit, don't go anywhere. Just stay right here with myself and Kurt. If you want to go into the other ones, Carrie's going to launch the breakout rooms now, and you'll all be sent into those breakout rooms, and we'll spend about 25 minutes having some conversations, and we'll come back to end the session. Great. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, if you could go to the next slide so that people can see what the icon oh, yes. will look like when they Perfect. join a breakout Thank room. You. So like Andy said, if you would like to talk about transit, don't do anything. Um, if you would like to join biking and walking, you're going to join a room called biking and walking. Yeah, that it's not sense. called biking and walking. It's called bike and pedestrian. And the other one is called streets. So I'm going to open these and everyone is going to have an option to join a room. You will see a small icon that says join a breakout room in the bottom of your screen where it, like where it says chat and those kinds of things at the bottom of your screen. You'll be able to choose which one you would like. I see people. If you can't figure it out, you'll be in transit and it'll be great. <laughs> right, Kurt? <laughs> so we'll be populating and we'll see you back here in a little bit. I'm going to stop sharing. Make sure you record your sessions when you get over there, facilitators, please. I'm going to just give a little bit of time here, Andy to make yeah. sure that people are joining. Um, you also have the opportunity, I believe Andy as host, to um, put, put people, people in a room. room if they're having trouble. Okay. Absolutely. So if you're having trouble, go ahead and unmute and say, hey, will you please just send me to so-and-so? I'm happy to do that. Andy's not seeing it. Can you say, um, I can do that? Let's see. I am gonna... Yep, I can assign him. Okay. Put Andy, go to your room, Andy. <laughs> Tell my kids. Go to your room. <laughs> go to go your room. room. All right. I'm going to go to streets now. Oh, Pete, good question. Will we be able to toggle between the different rooms? Yes. I believe you can leave a breakout room um, and come over and join another one. If you come back into the main room, then I can put you wherever you'd like to go after that. So um, anybody else having trouble? Wants to be put somewhere else. You can turn yes, your cameras on. Go ahead. Who's that? Go ahead, Bruce. I, I'm having trouble finding the buttons. So. Okay. Um, where do you want to go, Bruce? Uh, B. To which one is that? Sorry. Streets. Transportation. Transportation. Streets. I mean, streets. Okay. Transportation. Bruce. There you go. Okay, thank you. 
Okay. Anybody else? You happy where you are? Okay. Uh, okay. Let me. Where am I? Kurt, you ready? I'm gonna. I'm gonna open your slides next. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We'll open up the slides and we'll get this show on the road. Okay. So Kurt's gonna give just a few slides, um, and then we're gonna. Oh come on. That's not what I wanted to do. Let me get out of here first. Um, apologies. Arg, you're still seeing my breakout room, aren't you? Let me open the other one first. Patience, patience oh. with yourself, yeah. Andy. Let's see here. Um, you guys can't see this, but there's like window breakouts. Now do you see it? Yeah, we're seeing the, the public future transit connections. You need to go to slide. Yep. One. I got it. Here we go. Yes. Woo. And then yeah, presentation. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Take it away. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining the city of Sedona. Um, I'm Kurt Harris. I apologize for Robert Weber. He's our transit coordinator, very knowledgeable guy, came out of California and I'm filling in for him, pinch hitting. Um, so please, if you have questions, put those in the chat and we'll get back to you if I can't answer them um, myself. But um, this, these photos right here are the trailhead shuttles and um, what was launched in March and what's coming in mid 2023. Um, just some notes that, uh, Robert left me is uh, pretty successful so far in these trailhead shuttles. As of Sunday, December 4th, there's been 193,749 passengers boardings in 153 days of operations. Um, since the March 24th service launch, the system is transporting an average of 30 passengers per hour, uh, which really rivals uh, large urban transit systems. Um, and this is like just the beginning, right? Uh, and then the city is actually opening a third park and ride uh, this spring. It'll be located at Red Rock Loop Road and State Route 89A up by the high school. And that's line 11, which is serving the Dry Creek Vista and the Scow trailheads um, from this new location. So allow people to park and ride and get to these trailheads without congesting um, those routes in between and we'll continue to work with the forest service and the county to implement additional parking restrictions on dry creek road um, from the city limits to boynton uh, pass road by next spring as well and uh, the next is we're going to talk about micro transit and uh, sedona shuttle connect um, Microtransit is defined as the demand response it shares to curb to curb ride service. It's a planned initial service will operate Thursday through Sundays. These are the high um, congestion traffic times from 630 in the morning to 6 p.m. Passengers can schedule trips on a mobile app, a website or live uh, per reservationist on, uh, from a phone number. The service zone extends three quarter of a mile on either side of State Route 89A from south of the Red Rock Loop Road to Owen B Way in Uptown. There will be a fare for the service. Its proposed uh, fare policy is currently published for public comment in the public meeting and will be held on January 9th. Uh, please, your comments are desired and the more public input we get, the better we can serve the public. More information can be found at uh, sedonashuttle.com. Trips originating and terminating at any of the city shuttle park and rides will be free to encourage and to use this micro transit service to connect two shuttles. Um, service implementation has been delayed until at least mid 2023 due vehicle manufacturing delays. As everybody knows, we're, everybody's having uh, supply issues and it's really hitting the bus and these transit facilities as well. Um, uh, 
And we'll go ahead and I'll go to the next one, which is the uh, maintenance and operations facility. So um, that's the screen on the right. That's what's proposed. Um, part of this transit is in order to get federal funding is my understanding is you have to have a maintenance operation. Right now, there is an Obata heavy lift uh, mechanic operations within the city limits. We would have to send these vehicles out to like the manufacturer or a rep, which would spend a lot of time. So part of the plan is we're going to have out by the wastewater treatment plant, like you see on the right, this transit maintenance operation facility. Um, it's intended to be a regional transit maintenance facility so we can support uh, the local FTA uh, Federal Transportation Authority 5311 grant sub recipients that include Sedona Cottonwood and the Verde Valley caregivers. Um, the city is to begin engineering and design this year pending this FTA grant and funding. Uh, we're to approve for USDOT grant for the construction of the facility. The grant award can provide up to 80% of the dollars in federal funding for construction. Uh, the facility has to be designed to meet a 50-year life service, and that's built on today's money. And the facility is planned to pre-plumb to support future battery electric transit fees fleets, which isn't a cheap investment as uh, a lot of these have to be fast charging in order to have lease vehicles in service um, at all the time. So trying to reduce capital expenditure as much as possible. Um, so the city there's, there's a couple questions coming in sure. coming in that I think are probably related to the slides you're presenting so I'm going to go ahead and ask those now and um and correct me if I'm wrong but Sandy your question is is there a route do you want to ask you just go ahead and ask your question Sandy to make sure I don't I don't want to paraphrase for you just ask your question well I my internet connection is very poor, so I don't know if you can even hear me. You sound clear. Okay, well, my question was, and I kind of, as I thought about it, may have answered it, uh, the <laughs> connection between Sedona and Cottonwood, will it be, uh, it's provided now with Cottonwood Area Transit, CAT, uh, is that going to continue? Is that why there's no, route, no route proposed from Sedona to Cottonwood directly? Yeah, that's my understanding is that that whole program will then um, tie into Sedona's transit plan. It's supposed to be multimodal, right? So people could be able to get on any of those, come to a, di a different transit operations center and get to anything. So we're um, the big plan on Sedona's transit is to not only link to other transit systems, but also to uh, supplement them and expand them in order to meet riders' demands. Does that answer your question, Sandy? Okay, thank you. I mean, I just, it just seems like it was showing Cottonwood going through Camp Verde and that doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but, but well, if, if Cottonwood's gonna continue to make that connection between Cottonwood and Sedona, then that's the way it should be. Yes, that's and my go understanding. Ahead and, go ahead and ask your question, Anne about the ride exchange. I was just curious, which buses will actually go to the ride exchange? I'm gonna get to that bullet right here. Um, the ride exchange is the, gonna provide a central multimodal transportation exchange. That's, you know, the buses, transit itself, bikes, e-bikes, other rideable features, you know, scooters, um, and then also walkability, right? Um, Uber, Lyft, Micro Transit will all be able to go to the ride exchange. It's in preliminary conceptual design. It, you know, it's going to be right off Brewer Road. It's going to be just to the west of um, what's the real estate place there? Ross? Is it Ross Real Estate? Coldwell Banker. Coldwell Banker. Thank you. Um, just to the west of that, and that's where the proposed location is. Um, it's going to have uh, roadway intersection infrastructure improvements uh, to ensure effective circulation. We're pl design planning a bus turn off from 89A uh, for bus only to be as uh, efficient as possible and trying to promote people to 
use the transit system. Um, it will not be a parking area. It's just a ride exchange. So you're going there to be that hub to get off of one transit and to pick up another. So it, that's supposed to be the, the whole connection part, kind of like the hub of a wheel, you know, um, Rome and the spokes of um, the Roman Empire. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the whole goal of the ride exchange and they don't want people to park there but they want people to go there and it's not just getting on and off you can hang out there there's going to be potentially uh there'll be bathrooms uh it'll be a safe place well lit um it would uh, restrictive or planned vegetation so it doesn't bring in um people who want to camp there or hide out or the, you know, those kind of um, issues. So it's going to be more used than that. It'll be a small little park as well. So people can hang out and have picnics or wait for others as they finish their other hikes or so on. That's the theory. And then it'll be close enough to uptown that either people can walk from there and all over to try to make um, our whole transit interfix with the um, multimodal um, access. So Kurt, a question came in that relates to what you're speaking about right now. And the question is, will, will there be adequate shade structures and seating at the ride exchange and other transit stops? Yes, um, the, the ride exchange will actually be like, it'll be a park setting. So there's actually trying to make plans. So like in the weekends, there can actually be some type of, um, you know, food service, those uh, food trucks, um, there'll be picnic tables, uh, like a small little amphitheater, so there could be small little music uh, festivals there. Uh, and like I said, it'd be a great shaded place um, for people to gather who are then meeting to go to different trailheads. So the theory is you can have a family show up, a group show up, and everybody can decide if they don't want to do the same hike, they can go to different transit trailheads, they can go to uh, touristy stuff in uptown on 179 and visit as much as they can. And they could walk, bike, ride, electric, all there. It's close enough to provide that service in there. But if they want to go onto the west side for hiking or others, well, then it's just a, a, an easy transit center, you know, to stop. And, and remember, the micro transit is going to be a big part of this as well. Okay. And will there be handicapped spots at the, or parking spots there as well? That's well, there's question. only going to be limited. There will be handicap part of that ADA because we're really trying to reach out for um, the people who have physical challenges, visual challenges, so that they can enjoy Sedona as well. So there is going to be limited parking for handicap and access um, or for that um, micro transit for handicapped people to get on. So it'll be ADA compliant but it's not like a regional hub. It's not for people to drive their car and park. You're going to have to park at another location, get on a transit or a bus or bike or walk to get to the riding hub to use that. So we're trying to get people to get out of the car and, and do another multimodal uh, access traffic to do exactly what the uh, SIM plans about Sedona in motion. Great. So Kurt, we hung here for a while and I don't know if you're done with this slide or if you're ready for me to move. No, I'm ready for the next one. Okay, keep the questions coming. Yeah, good questions. Thank you, everybody. Um, we're gonna talk about this at the end. I'm gonna talk about Sedona Transit Advisory Committee. So um, Robert wanted me to do a sales pitch. <laughs> The STAC, uh, Sedona Transit Advisory Committee, STAC, is an active committee that serves in advisory capacity to the city manager's office and that his or her designee on matters relating to all activities in the public transit system. Current STAC members include citizens, member of the business community and NPOs. Um, all STAC meetings are open to general public and it's a great venue for citizens to provide public comments on the city transit system. Um, please visit SedonaShuttle.com. There is a link to Transit Advisory Committee for additional information, meeting dates, agendas, and, and minutes. We're always open to try to get people to join. So if you know neighbors, especially people who have mobility issues or challenges, these are the kind of people we want to bring on board because this is an important service for them to get out and see the city and not have to rely on their vehicle. And There's then, a a question that came sure. in, um, 
And if I, uh, if I, if I uh, mess it up, Joseph, please help me. But it says, how will this plan reduce traffic into Uptown? The planned Uptown garage will take cars and those people will take the bus to the exchange? Yeah, so this is just another tool in the tool boat to try to get people to plan their visit when they come to Sedona. So the Sedona whole.com and now the Sedona shuttle and all that, if we can get people to get to the website, download apps, so when they come from or they're staying in the village or where they're staying wherever, if they're overnight visitors or just day visitors, they have a plan to where they're gonna park their car and they're gonna leave their car and they're gonna get out and use transit because it is far more effective and efficient for people to get around the town in a transit system and then they can enjoy the, the sights and sound versus of trying to always trying to find a parked car, get to a trailhead, it's full of parking, what do they do next? So it's trying to, what we talk in engineering, it's warrants, right? It's that trip uh, count list to re reducing the amount of time people are getting in and out of their vehicle they can just get to their vehicle, leave it parked. Uh, the, that will reduce congestion, not only in uptown, but in all of the different feeders to 179, 89, and so on, especially when we're finding those peak times from 11 to like three o'clock, especially on the Fridays and Saturdays, Sundays. That's the plan. That's that's our goal, our objective. Great. Any more, any more questions? Yeah, they're coming in. And you just have one more slide anyway, right, Kurt? Yeah, it's just we're talking. I think you're on it right now, isn't it? The last Am I? slide? I don't know. Nope. Nope. This is okay, go one. back one more. And okay. And I do have a question coming in if you want me to answer. Yeah, let's, ask let's go ahead and answer the question. Okay. Since most of the tourist traffic arrives from the south, from Phoenix, what are the parking plans for the southern sections of State Route 179? Right now, it's we have Bowstring, right, is the Sedona operation. We're looking to expand on that to actually put uh, um, bathrooms for the guests, for the bus transit people to get to those um, others. Um, there's other larger regional plans that are in the works for working with the Forest Service, perhaps even in the village of Oak Creek. Uh, right now, all of the efforts are trying to focus on that uptown congestion, the congestion at the Y and so on and work our way out. But that's a great question um, um, to eventually have that to where people can actually, you know, go to the village of Oak Creek and park there and even get on transit to come in Sedona and then hit the trailheads as they're going through. Um, you know, there used to be the open trolley system that used to go around. Um, that was very useful and all that, but um, it, it actually sadly went away and now we're trying to bring that back, but um, that's a good good question. Any others? Not for now, continue. Okay, so um, I finished the, the Sedona Transit Advisory Committee. If you guys are really interested, transit, I mean, this is for your town, this community. Robert and I highly encourage you to look into that, ask your neighbor, especially if you know someone who has mobility challenges, um, this would be a great opportunity that their voice can be heard. And we can try to tailor that information for them to make sure we're keeping Sedona open to everybody who has uh, any mobility issues. So the future transit program growth and funding, public transit is uh, bought and paid for with public dollars uh, as the growth in the direction of the future transit program will ultimately be driven by data public engagement and emergency community needs. CD staff will continue to pursue county, state, federal funding to subsidize both capital and operating expenses for its current and future transit programs, which will decrease local funding contributions. And as you can see, these are what he has up here, Cottonwood Area Transits connecting Sedona and the village of Oak Creek, the Yavapai Apache Transit, that's Camp Verde, Sedona, Village of Village of Oak Creek. And the mountain line is connecting Flagstaff, Sedona. And I've heard of that. I live in Flagstaff that they're talking about having vans that would then be able to connect. And that would actually be a hub um, at the uh, Fort Tuthill um, mm. County Park. So you'd be able to take a, a bus from Flagstaff to there, get in a transit van that then would shuttle you down to... Um, to the city of Sedona. 
So a follow-up question to um, to the parking question for South, South State Route 79. There's concern that that bowstrings parking is almost overflowing, having trouble understanding how you could plan to put more parking there. Can you expand on that a little bit, Kurt? Yeah, that's just the process that we've had right now. That's the quick hanging fruit. But we're talking about um, providing more shuttles along State Route 179. Um, parking is always going to be an issue since we're, you know, surrounded by four service federal land and then the residences. So as the use comes in and where we see those needs, then we can identify um, city or um, other private entities that we could then expand to in the parking. Um, I just mentioned bowstring because that's what we're operating right now. We want to enhance that and encourage people because the more that that parking is full there, then we know we're doing our job and we're offsetting. Most of that is for people going to the Cathedral Rock Trailhead that closes it back and beyond. So, um, so we would continue to work with other businesses. That's what's really working at Bowstring is the church there is allowing us to use that parking lot. But we're already in discussions of looking at where we can strategize on putting parking. However, there's a lot of public input from the community that we have to be very strategic in where we're going to locate those. So we have the most um, uh, options, alternatives um, at where that where that location would be. Like again, this process is still pro you know in the process as it's going as we're growing. So right now we're just trying to hit those areas where we know where the trailheads are overflowing and where they're having highest needs. And also, I didn't know that till I got here. A lot of the like uh, cathedral trailhead and all that, those were restrictions put on from the Forest Service to the city of Sedona. So these options that you're actually seeing were actually the city had no choice other than to try to do that parking at Bowstring as a placeholder to get us where we need to be in order to make transit more resilient here within the city. So but these are great questions that we need to write these down. This is the stuff that we'd like to get to Robert so he can bring to uh, city council to get them understanding of what those needs are. So as the needs increase, we can get more inertia, um, more energy to, to, to get these plans in process and plan in. I know like at the Y, they're going to be tearing down that old Chevron building and the city right now is uncertain what we're going to do for that. So I know it's not going to be parking. There's not enough need, but as these opportunities come available, the city's looking for everything we can do to try to keep um, the vision in, you know, um, in hand in order to be ready to, to develop more parking facilities and getting people. And then, you know, that goes beyond. So hopefully getting people to plan if they're coming from Phoenix, instead of having multiple vehicles that they're actually ride sharing to get to the city of Sedona or the village of Oak Creek. And I've been in meetings where they're talking about even having parking structures or whatever at near I-17 at State Route 179. So they're welcomed as they're coming right off the freeway or they're using some type of mass transit at the freeway, then they can enter right there on 179 into a transit system. Great. But let's, again, we have to get ahead. there. Right. Let's go ahead and take just a one or two more questions if folks have them. I want to close the breakout rooms here in just a minute. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, are there any other questions? Um, there are no more in the chat box, but we're humans. We can use our very own voices. Um, Mary, is the Uptown parking garage still happening? Right now, the current understanding is the city council voted to put a hold on it. It was ready to go out to bid. And so we're the council, we're going to come back and engage uh, the consulting engineer that has a, a consultant that specifies in parking garages in metro areas to review the studies, to review our studies and uh, validate our plan to install that parking garage. But right now that project is on hold. I guess the sticker price was a little bit for too much for council and for others on how much it grew. Um, we hope we can get that project still going. In the interim, we're planning 
to um, still develop a surface lot at, at that location to try to get at least some parking in the interim. Um, but right now that project is on hold. Okay, and very quickly, because I can't just leave one sitting in there. Are you still considering the expansion of the Little Horse Trailhead parking for transit? Can you answer that quickly and then I'll close us down? I don't know. I don't have the information on that. That'd be a great one to put, leave in the chat and we can get Robert we'll back get to the question. Yeah. And all of these chats, not only just the recording itself, but all the questions that have come in are saved in, um, in, a, in a transcript. Okay, I'm gonna close us down which means we end up getting um, one more minute to hang out together. And uh, looks like people are heading back. Thank you so much, transit transitors. Thank you, Kurt. Great information. You, Andy. I think everybody is making their way back. All right, facilitators, how'd it go? Carrie. It was great. We um, had a whole bunch of people raise their hands with questions. We had just enough time to get every question answered. Um, so that was really great. You having a map um, up to address questions was really helpful. Um, I hope those that were in the streets, if they want to go back to their little reactions tab and give a thumbs up if they thought it went well, that would be super helpful. But I think on the whole, um, it went really well. Great. How about um, bikes and pedestrians? Where they spend their money, Jessica? I don't think I even talked about that. They got to spend money in in the bikes and pedestrians room. Did it? Did one of them come out needing a lot more than others? Where is she? Where is Jessica? She's lost. <laughs> Maybe that sixty. Oh, there she is. She's oh, there. Back. She is. <laughs> I was trying to talk to you, Jessica, and you weren't back yet. How did uh, bikes and pedestrians go? Where did people spend their money? We've got some money in West Sedona. We mostly talked about some priorities for pedestrian crossings, how to connect existing paths, and potentially looking at how to make 89A a little bit more bike friendly, bike and walking friendly. Great. Um, I think transit went really well. We also had time to get to all of our questions. Um, Kurt did a fabulous job. We kept it loose and had questions along the way. Uh, thumbs up from transit. Lots more transit in the future. Thanks for all your questions. Harry, do I have a last slide or do we just close it out by saying thank we, you? We do. Our, I mean, okay. our last slide basically says thank you. It also <laughs> says that we have another one of these listening and learning sessions. I hope everyone felt like they were heard and they were listened to as well as you learn something. So that's on the part of us as facilitators, city staff and the community. Um, we have another one of these next Wednesday, same time on Zoom. If you haven't registered already, you can do that at plantsedona.com. This one will be focusing on um, economic vitality, we have a set of panel speakers, um, Molly Spangler from the city of Sedona, Steve Ayers from the town of Camp Verde, and Tom Binnings, um, who is part of Vivi Rio. And um, they will be kind of addressing, you know, all things kind of economic vitality, development, sustainability, um, both, you know, specific to Sedona in the Verde Valley and kind of trends as it pertains to the U.S. Great. Um, Cynthia, I want to let you take us out since you're the lead planner here. Do you want to mention other ways in which the community can comment? Sure. Um, I guess you just took the screen down, but plantsedona.com. I can't get back to that screen. I got too many things open. <laughs> it's easy, plantsedona.com. So if is. you have more questions or comments, feel free to go onto that website at any time to um, submit those questions and comments. And even if you think of stuff um, later tonight or tomorrow, um, go ahead and enter those questions on, there's a comment form that you can submit and that would be great. Um, and, and that can also include, you know, just reflections on this, uh, this, this present, the, this discussion that we've had, you know, I mean, we, what we haven't had the chance to do and we can't spend the next 10 minutes talking about it because we want to be respectful of your time is 
what what did you not quite get out of it? There was, I wanted to talk more about X, Y, Z. And there's all kinds of ways that we can continue to open that dialogue. Um, like we said, we have upcoming workshops in person that there will be a lot of flexibility to have in-person discussions. We can always slide in a circulation table somewhere. Um, we can start an online discussion. We can have a presentation. So if there are things we didn't quite dig deep enough into tonight and you enjoyed this setting um, with your community, we're happy to host another one um, to get that done. So on behalf of our group, and thank you so much to city staff for, for helping pull all of this together, but most of all, thanks to all of you for joining us tonight. I know virtual's not the best, but I tell you what, it's really snowing here and I'm grateful I didn't have to drive to Sedona and you all didn't also have to risk your lives to get there. So appreciate your time and uh, we'll see you very soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Bye you. Holly. Thank you very much.